Welcome back to the show. Our next guest is Keith Groff, developer of Lighthouse Row. Keith, welcome to the AC Mike Show Hello, here at Stockton University Thanks Comcast. And uh, listen, first of all, before we get into what you're doing out there in the inlet of Atlantic City, tell us a little bit about Keith Groff and what brought you to Atlantic City. Uh, I always wanted to live down the shore, and in, I was in my early 20s, wanted to uh, move down. But uh, I grew up going to Ocean City for a week, you know, every summer. Completely unaffordable, right? So shopping around, and just only one place to go, Atlantic City. Plus, I was like, all right, it's exciting. I'm 21, right? <clears throat> What's, you know, great. So I, I bought a place, very affordable, beach, you know, a block from the beach, three bedrooms, like 150 grand. Uh, this is back when Borgata was getting built. And I absolutely fell in love with it right away, right off, right off the bat. <clears throat> the, uh, the neighborhood, I just got to know people really quickly, you know, where, where I lived before. I knew a couple neighbors, no big deal, but, and it's been like that ever since, since I've lived here. I, I bounced around all over the inlet, four different houses, or, or re renovate, flip, uh, uh, and then I built a couple homes in 04 and 08 in the inlet. And uh, every neighborhood got to know different people and, and, ever, and, and continued to build on all the other friendships I had in the other neighborhoods because it's so, such a tight-knit community. Love right. it. And when you say that, uh, someone who lives there and a resident as well was in the inlet for about three years in Down Beach uh, now. It, it is. It's just a small community. Mm -hmm. People think, well, first of all, people get surprised. People actually live there? Yeah. You know, people, but... They don't know that section of the city <laughs> as much as every other section because exactly. there's no right. casino there. Exactly. <clears throat> and when you, you know, as a young guy coming into town, you know, tell us what some of the, you, you know, the things that attracted you, that magnet. I mean, I know you spoke of the beach, Afford of course. Affordability. The affordability. Affordability, which is still, uh, in comparison to any other short town, it's still there. Yeah. The affordability is still there. Um, the action, the year-round action shows, casinos. I'm not right. a big gambler. Maybe, you know, a couple bucks here and there. Right. Um, clubs. I was big in the clubs and right. the dancing and uh, concerts. Um, and uh, I'd have my, my friends, family. They'd always want to come down to visit. So it was really nice. And, and I always wanted to build a home. And I built a home across the street from the home I was living in. And then uh, it just kept, I just kept rolling it into the right. next project, to the next project. Uh, what do you call it? Parlaying. I just, I, I never took money out of the city. I just keep putting it in, into and business. it just kept growing and growing into bigger and bigger. And uh, 08 set me back like it did a lot of people, right. and so I took a little break. But now I'm uh, back with full, full force, pedal to the metal. So you're doing this as a young guy coming into a city that you don't know a lot about, but you know enough I about. Didn't know anybody? Right. I, knew, I knew no one. Right. Uh, uh, I'd listen to the Pinky Kravitz right. show. Somebody tipped me off about this talk radio. I like talk radio, and. Uh, he would always have people as to what's going on. You know, there's always things to get involved in. I yep. mean, if you if you want to get involved, it's so easy in Atlantic City, and you get to know everybody quickly. Right. It's not like a huge city, right? Um, tons of people come and go, but the people who live there, it's a very tight knit community. Right. And so I got involved with the first Ward Civic Association meeting uh, uh, meetings with Miss Libby Wills, who's still the president, and uh, and then I met Jesse Kurtz, and I met uh, the councilman at the time, Marty Small. I mean, I met everybody. Sporty and yeah, the Sporty. Others, yeah, yeah. Oh, I ran against Sporty. Right. Yeah, ah, that's yeah, right. Man. That's right. Yeah, that's and we've that, been come friends ever since. That's we, that's the only clean thing. campaign in Atlantic City history was me and Sporty. You know what? Yeah, we that's never, a, that we never talked trash. I got to get the booth of you out here one day for a segment <laughs> and talk about that and what public service is all about, whether you win, lose, or how yeah, to do it yeah. the proper way. Because I think definitely, I don't think, I know, that's definitely a show because what we see during campaign politics right now, it's not what most people want to see. People, I think we're falling. People were falling asleep at our debate. Man, it was. We were just talking, being nice to each other. Right. No, I love it, Keith. I love it. So, so you're doing this. You're working. You know, you have a profession as well. Yeah. Yeah. You're flipping houses. You're building. You got a family. Yeah. I mean, but you're seeing the potential of this, of. The, the inlet of Atlantic City, of what's going on. And, you know, it goes in ebbs and flows. We have our ups and our downs, like, out of the, out of the place, especially what you said, 2008 and the yeah. casinos and closing, whatnot. Sure. But you're not going to find that type of deal. No. You're not going to find that type of camaraderie yeah. that you find in the inlet or the down beach or the center or midtown. You know, that's one of the things that I loved about it as well. Once I got involved, I was like, you know, let's start networking. I call it networking, mm -hmm. whether it was volunteering or whatnot. And that's what you folks down there have done. Now, the inlet, 
a mass. I mean, we, we've had a couple times uh, Nelson Johnson on the show as well as Ralph Hunter. And Ralph is a resident of the inlet and he speaks about it for so, so elegantly and so passionately about what it was and it's okay and what it can be and whatnot. But there was so much activity down that end. And now it was so, you know, now we see vacant lots, but at one time they were not being touched at all. No. Now what you're doing and some of the others as well out there is phenomenal. Talk to us about that, what you see. And we're going to get into Lighthouse Row in a minute. But the other developers, the other, because now you're doing what you're doing. You're flipping, you're fixing houses, you're building. It's, you know, investors start seeing this or folks or families. Because, listen, casinos are not. We want folks to come in. It's a family destination as well. And especially, I, I say, the, the inlet especially. Yes. It's a blank slate. It was jam-packed. There was no land available in the, in the 40s, right. 50s. Uh, it, 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 it was decimated in the 60s, 70s. They tore down, I mean, everything they were supposed to build, you know, these grand resorts, casinos, and the, the land was just vacant from, for the entire Southeast Inlet, basically. There's just a few homes, original homes remaining. Um, so uh, me and my family, you know, year after year, coming down to my Northeast Inlet homes, right. depending on what road I was living on it that, that year, <laughs> would always say, man, the potential. Everybody says it. Everybody who's been riding down the boardwalk for Dozens of years, ten, you know, decades, right. have always said they ride their bike from Margate, Ventnor, and they say, "Why, why, why is this still vacant?" Well, it's always been my my ultimate dream to develop it and and bring it back to what it was, and it was just flourishing with families, and and in the beginning, in the early two thousands, even mid late two thousands, you know, up until the last five years, there was really no there was good community, but there was no development right. connection, or the people. They weren't like really open about things. Everyone was kind of close to their chest. And then Nick and Mike came in, and, and John, Pat Fasano comes in, Bart comes in, uh, and everyone just seems open, honest. This is what I plan on doing, and no one is trying to get in on that, right? right? right. And mess that up. Everyone, there's plenty of room. Monopolize it, or right? Just right Let yeah. me pick off this little piece, piece. You can't do this, and right. I want a million dollars for this little piece. And everyone is playing. Very nicely. There's a lot of area. Everyone's got their own little areas they're trying to improve. And the Southeast Inlet's been on my heart for 20 years. And to be able to do what I'm, I'm, I'm now uh, felt driven to do as my mission is uh, what I'm finally doing. And, and uh, I can't believe it's happening, yeah. man. <laughs> and that's believe. what we're going to go into. So, so you're doing this. You're flipping. You're here. You're getting involved in the community as well. And, you know, you're doing a great job at it. So Keith not only says that, you know, this is pretty cool what I'm doing and I'm flipping, I'm living here, my family's coming, uh, friends are coming. You have this vision, you know, whether it's through a prayer, whatever it may be. I know you're a very spiritual man and I appreciate that when you give the, the praise and, and what you do. But you see this vision, and it's like some people may have looked at you like the rock would look like when back in the day with that eye. Like, what was he talking about? But, you know, now talk to us now about Lighthouse Row, what that consists of, yeah. and what your vision was. And then we'll talk about the views and what you may see when you walk out that uh, sliding door. All right, right. So uh, I, had a, uh, I had a lot of land that I'd been purchasing since 08 when Atlantic City started going down. A lot of casinos closing, and I was going to auctions where... Two people were there, three people were I mean, it was unbelievable. So I was just buying land a little bit here, a little bit there. Well, over the last decade, I acquired a lot of land because I did want to go back to building. After 08, I took a little hit, but I wanted to go back. Well, I, I, I'd pray a lot about just, God, what do you want me to do? I, I can't see the future. I don't know what's around the corner. What do you want direction. me to do? Direction, just direction. I, and I got no clear sense whatsoever to build on this land that I so badly wanted to build on. And uh, I did a, a Daniel fast a couple of years ago. Uh, we do it every, every January. And, uh, and after the Daniel fast, I broke the fast on a Sunday. I woke up that Monday morning with an incredibly vivid, vivid dream. I don't have dreams that usually make sense or I even remember. But this was vivid. And it was the view. It was the view up high from a balcony of land that I didn't own, whatever. So I drove my truck down there for, for something. I think I was meeting up with uh, Mini Golf Mike, you know, at the North Beach right. Mini Golf. And I set my ladder up at where this vision was, set my ladder up, turned around, and I looked at the view of what would be Potentially the, right. the balconies of Lighthouse Row. And I said, this is where I have to build. Right. It made no sense. I own land one block away. Right. And I prayed about it, prayed about it, and it didn't go away. It, it, went, it, it felt stronger and stronger as the days went by that this is what I needed to do. And, 
uh, it all it came, it came to pass that I ended up acquiring that land at an auction for my max bid price that I felt I should have bid, which was four hundred thousand right. dollars. I clicked for the last time. I said, "If this is your will, God, I'm going to get it for four hundred thousand. It went up, 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 up. I clicked four hundred thousand, and no one else bid. Mm. And I said, uh, "God wills, God's will be done." Sold all my other land, um, sold the house I built in '08, and now I'm selling my house, my shore house, Love to it. keep funding the project. The project I'm right. all in a thousand percent. Uh, and- that's the beauty of it, and that's what I want to talk about. Because you know, you're taking huge risk, you know, but you're following your your passion, your heart, what you're feeling, you know, and you're going all the way in. I mean, some of these other guys you named, they've been doing it for a long time. Not that you haven't. Uh, they're working with partners and whatnot. But what you've done there, you know, and I now I want you to talk. We got about two minutes left. Let folks know what they where they can see. I mean, on this interview, they'll see Lighthouse Row. But you know where they could find Lighthouse Row and what those uh, uh, townhomes are, are consist of and the views that you're going to be yeah. seeing. I mean, now you touched it. You got the lighthouse. Yeah. You got the beach. You got the ocean. Go ahead. I'll let you do it. So, um, other than the day with, on the ladder, maybe I went back a couple of times <laughs> between then and there. I mean, just to double check the view, uh, especially at night, it's totally different. But um, I finally got up to the second floor balcony a couple uh, months ago. Or actually, uh, about only six weeks ago, I guess we built it. It's going really quickly. And uh, everyone who goes up there, it's, it's something, yeah. it's really something. It's something I, I couldn't have seen on my own. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it, it, even, even a year ago, it seemed a little crazy. Um, my wife thought it was a little crazy. I, you know, I think a lot of people thought it was crazy that I was building there because no one's built there in Dude. 50 years yes. or whatever in the, in the Southeast Inlet. And uh, the, the announcements since then that only God could have known, like Kehov, Kehov didn't know about me, and I didn't know about Kehov. The fact that that's moving forward and that's coming right across the street, uh, I think gives me some validity. It gives, I don't look so crazy anymore. I mean, that's the big boys, right? Exactly. They, they're national builders on the New York Stock Exchange. If, if they think it's good to build there, then I think I did the right did thing. Right thing. And, re- and regardless, really, quite frankly, I really did, I, I swear I went into this with even if I broke even. Right, so I you're mean, be okay. You feel this you is what I'm internally to do. you would have been. When right. I'm there, you know, even right. you love the energy, and you're not uh, like a builder builder. Right. But when you see like the, pl- I mean, I've got the plumbers there, the roofers there, the fiberglass guys there, the electrician guys there, the concrete's getting poured. The like, energy is like amazing. Like on, on rainy days, there might be only a couple crews there, and I'm just like, oh, this is the same. We gotta get guys back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Now, now I'm like, well, this job's gonna be done in a few months. What right. can I do well, now? Gotta <laughs> I gotta keep a moving. Piece of land, right. Oh, and it's when it works. Listen. Keith, we appreciate you here. We're going to continue this conversation as we go in and when the first tenants uh, of actually move in and what they do. I appreciate what you're doing as a resident of Atlantic City, as a fan of Atlantic City, taking that risk and doing what you're doing, bringing families also to Atlantic City while this development goes on because what you do brings investor mm-hmm. curious, yep, yep. right? They will and see what's going on. And we're anchored by North Beach Mini Golfs right across the street. Right. I mean, that, it's just, it's the synergy's perfect. With Lucky Snake Arcade and uh, the Steel Pier, right. uh, it's all right there. I mean, uh, you know, you the water it. park. We're going to be bringing families back to the inlet. It's going to be awesome. Listen, Keith, want to thank you again. Developer, Keith Groff, Lighthouse Row. Folks, make sure you get on out there. Thank you for being the guest on today's show. We'll be right back with our next guest. Thank Thanks, you, brother. brother.